And here we go, last three. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Everyone, welcome to the show. Hey, everyone. How you doing? If you have been watching my uh, two other previous streams, we are doing one more, my friend. We are doing one more. Welcome, everyone, to the last stream of the day. Last stream of the day. Hey, my friend New York Art is in the chat. Uh, welcome, my friend. It's been a long time. Uh, we are drawing a genie in a Marvel style. Genie from Aladdin in a Marvel style. That's what we are going to do right now. So uh, thank you guys for, for joining in today. Thank you for joining in. Uh, I am on the main channel now, again, because uh, YouTube has made it so I can be on the main channel. YouTube has made it because um, at the end of the day, before I didn't like it because it was all mixed with the other videos, but now, but now it's not. Uh, it's in its own tab. So I said, why not? Why not stream on the main channel? So it's uh, good to see you. Um, so again, I am like the other streams, I am going to be answering questions that you give to me on the YouTube uh, community tab. So if you want to ask a question, go to the YouTube community tab, okay, and ask a question, and I will be answering them in this final, final stream here, okay? So... So I'm going to be drawing him like this. Over here beside uh, beside Mickey here. So let's go to the questions here, okay? So uh, the next question comes from a longtime watcher, uh, Commando Vic. Commando Vic, uh, who should be the next villain in the Batman 2? That's a great question there. Um, again, there's a lot of uh, the new Batman series. It's, it's very real life. So I would rather see like a real life style uh villain but to be honest it's probably gonna be the joker it's probably gonna be the joker let's be honest uh bane might work if it's reworked so it's not it doesn't have that uh, crazy venom stuff right venom might work uh venom i <laughs> mean bane we're crossing uh we're crossing um franchises there no no uh so venom might work And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Okay, so the next one, next question. Next one, Aquaman or Namor? Will you draw anything related to Black Panther, Wakanda forever? Uh, Poopability asks, yes. thank you so much, my friend, Poopability. Um, I would say that um, Aquaman or Namor, what I, one thing I do love what, what uh, Marvel did was that they completely changed who Namor was, okay? Namor before was Prince of Atlantis just like Aquaman. And then now they realize there would be too much, way, 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 way too much. Um, uh, they would think that they copied Aquaman. But again, it's further from the truth. Because uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Namor was created before Aquaman. So Aquaman was the quote-unquote ripoff. <laughs> if we're going to be 100% honest, Aquaman was the ripoff. And uh, Aquaman was the ripoff, and Namor was the original. But Aquaman came out first, so they decided to give take away the Atlantis, and give him a uh, you know a different origin. Okay, which is uh, I believe it's called Talokan, if I'm not mistaken. Talokan, and and a shout out to my buddy uh, Anthony Francisco. If you guys don't know Anthony Francisco, has been on the channel before. Father. Call him the father of Baby Groot because he created Baby Groot. Um, he did a lot of... He designed Namor. He designed Namor. So, uh, so happy for him. Now he's killing it uh, and is a new company. He doesn't work for Marvel anymore. He works for a company called Dolphin and he's doing some amazing, amazing things. So, couldn't be happier for the dude. I saw him when I was in California recently. I went to California over the, over the, over the, uh, the summer and we had dinner. And uh, wonderful seeing him and his family uh, there. So, so I'm happy they did that. Now, as an Asian guy, you know, like we we always, I kind of always imagined, um, I always imagined that uh, Namor was kind of Asian, because I think he was always drawn that way. And then people would always kind of label him as Asian. So when they made him not Asian, 
and, and again, great, great for um, my, uh, you know, my friends, uh, uh, my friends who are uh, Mexican, you know, or Latino descent. You know, that's fantastic for them. But we were like, oh, it shouldn't be Asian. But now I see that what they were trying to do, making him more of like a Mayan culture, because there's a lot more. It's actually very smart. It's very, very smart what they did with Namor. So uh, I'm excited to see it. Haven't seen the movie yet, of course. Uh, and we'll see if, if it works. We'll, we'll definitely see. But so far, so good. It's looking great. Uh, but again, I'm going to have a Wakanda video. I want It's not even a Wakanda video. It's a Black Panther mech video. And that will be out uh, later this week. Right? He's looking more like a scroll, let's be honest. <laughs> like a scroll <laughs> than, a, than a genie right now. So, next question. Uh, from my buddy Angel Bob. How you doing, my friend Angel Bob, 1977? What's the most satisfying thing to draw? I'm particularly fond of robots covered in rivets. No idea why. <laughs> because you've been, been watching my content too long, my friend. Um, depends on the day. Depends on the day. To be honest, all drawing to me is... Uh, all drawing to me is satisfying. If I Number one, I enjoy drawing it. If it's something new. Especially if it's something new. That's why I like drawing new things every day. I don't like drawing the same thing over and over again. I think that's why I didn't last that long in comics. Uh, as much as I enjoyed working on certain characters, you get tired of it after a while. Like we did, we did the pizza analogy before. You can have only have pizza so many times before you get sick of it. After a while, I love pizza. But after so long, uh, you, you can't really eat a lot of it anymore, right? Same thing with uh, drawing characters. You can only draw the same characters over and over again for a certain amount of time. And that's the same for me. So it's more about sometimes it can be transformers, but you know if I, uh, if a if I'm laid out, if the uh, art is laid out, if the art is laid out already, if I'm happy with the composition, just filling in the details, I can actually turn off my mind, and just kind of draw it. You know, just kind of draw, and it's uh, it's very very interesting. Oh, my buddy Apple's here. Good morning, my friend. Good morning, my friend. Oh, 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 and he brought in some very interesting, um, uh, what's it called, a very interesting knowledge for us. Okay, my friend, uh, he says, Aztecs and Mayans believe they were from Atlantis and were always trying to find their way back home. Well, that makes way more sense. So thank you so much, Apple, for, ex for explaining that uh, to us. So it actually makes sense. So it wasn't a random uh, pick. It actually makes sense. So thank you so much, and uh, uh, Apple. Good to see you, my friend. We, we should we should definitely talk, uh, not not on uh, <laughs> not on stream. Like talk in person soon, my friend. Uh, it's, it's been way too long. I almost almost uh, went to Alamo Comic Con this year, uh, but I just I just couldn't make it work, unfortunately. But hopefully next year, I get to uh, bring my my buddy Apple out for dinner, uh, one of these uh, one of these days, my friend. So very very good to see you there. Uh, but yeah, so even more excited. For uh, Wakanda Forever now, even even more excited now. So we'll see how that goes. So, so this is the genie. I actually, to be honest, I think he should be bigger. But I have two other big characters I want to draw on these sides, bigger than the genie. But we will probably do that uh, tomorrow. Okay. So, but in the meantime, let's answer the next question here. Uh, will I draw? The thinker asks. Will you draw video game characters or wrestlers as superheroes? <laughs> now, I probably won't draw wrestlers as superheroes. I'll draw wrestlers as wrestlers. Um, I have to be, like, I'm not, I'm not much of a concept artist. I'll be honest. Like, I do d enjoy doing those mashups because they're easy. But, uh, I'll be honest. For me, they're easy because, you know, it's pretty much just taking little bits here, little bits there, and then creating, uh, you know, creating something new with it, right? So it's it's not... I'll be honest, it's not the hardest thing in the world to do. Um, but to do actual concept art, to do what my, my buddies Anthony and, and Andy Park does, man, that, that is a special, special skill. Like, of course, they do have the comics to reference back to, but to come up with those ideas, because concept art is not just great art, guys. It's ideas. It's the ideas you have. Like, you could be the best uh, technical drawer in the world, but if you don't have the ideas, it's very hard to make it as a as a concept artist. It really is. You need the ideas. You need to be an idea person. And I just don't have those kind of ideas. So uh, when when I create superheroes out of wrestlers, 
uh, you know, it's not the hardest. I won't say it's the hardest thing in the world, but uh, probably not the best at it. But to turn their outfits into a Marvel-esque style thing is possible. It's definitely possible. And I could do it. I definitely could do it. But probably not interested. I'd, I'd much rather draw an actual art piece. Like, for example, Bloodline. We've been talking about the Bloodline a lot recently. I would love to do a Bloodline piece. That, that would be a lot of fun for me, personally. A lot of fun for me. So, definitely expect more wrestling art, but not necessarily me turning them uh, into, into superheroes uh, in that case, right? So, so yeah. Uh, so, let's see here. Muhammad Afda says, will you adapt your kid's past drawing into a comic book? Do you guys love your stuff? Uh, I will admit that was part of the plan before. I'm not sure if that's part of the plan now. Like, never say never again, but it's definitely not in the cards in the immediate future. You never know down the line. Now, I will say, uh, for those of you who weren't in the stream here, would you like me to draw your drawings? Would you like that? Would you like that? Uh, not even draw your drawings. So a couple of things I'm thinking about doing. I would. I was hesitant to do this in the past, but I am considering drawing your OCs now. I am highly considering doing that, especially if you were younger. Especially if you are a, someone here who's watching that is young. I know nobody here under 13 is watching my channel, right, YouTube? <laughs> but uh, to say you are on the younger variety, or you may have a brother and sister that are younger variety, uh, I would love to draw that. And, you know, to be honest, it's very similar to what Jazza uh did but i don't mind saying that because jazza said he copied uh drawing the kids drawing from me <laughs> he actually said that in his videos or he got the idea from me i'm definitely not the first one to do it uh thomas romaine uh had been doing that for a long time uh and that guy is just incredible just incredible he has a book published by my friends at udon uh that dude uh incredible stuff but he doesn't need you to like he's a he's a very uh prolific artist so so i definitely wasn't the first one to do it but, uh, you know, my videos actually kind of blew up. My channel blew up because of those things. So uh, maybe you want to do that. Or, or here's another thing. Here's another thing. If, um, I, and I mentioned this in the last live stream, if you wanted to build a character out of Lego, okay? And I don't care what age you are. If you want to build a character out of Lego and you want me to interpret that into a drawing, I'd love to do that. Absolutely love to do that. If you do that, tweet to me. Your creation at box office artist on Twitter. Tweet to me your creation, and uh, maybe I will draw that uh, in my style. I'll, I'll try to interpret your Lego creation in my style. That's another thing I, I wanted to do that I thought would be a lot of fun. Another thing, if you are into Minecraft, if you are into Minecraft and you like make, if you make yourself a Minecraft skin, if you make yourself a mine for your character, make a Minecraft skin for your character like an original one. And you want me to draw that? That'd be something I'd be interested in doing. So those three things, if you are interested in doing any of those things, let me know, okay? Or, or tweet me on Twitter. Twitter's probably the best place to do that, not Instagram. On Instagram, I, I don't really check my messages that much on Instagram at all. I actually had somebody do that for me for a while. But uh, yeah. So Mario says, I can create a Minecraft character. Please do it. Do it now. You'll be the first one. You'll be the first one, my friend. But definitely Lego or, or do that. That's what I'd like to do. That would be a lot of fun. That would be a lot of fun. And we'll do it live. We'll do it together. We'll do it together live here. Okay? So those are two things that uh, we, we can do. And, Mo, and Mo, Mohammed said, love your stuff. Thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate that. Uh, Squeak, 1888. And again, I hope that's not your birth year, my friend. Uh, I struggle with ratios and bodies with arms and legs or head sometimes being too small, too large. Any tips on getting the correct sizes that's a great question artistic question that will come with time it really will so a couple things you could do if you are drawing uh digitally first of all you could tell one way to tell the stakes in your drawing if you're drawing digitally you could flip the canvas reverse it mirror it sometimes when you mirror your drawing you could actually see the flaws in your drawing you could actually see what's going on wrong it's a it's an old trick we've been doing forever now if you're drawing traditionally what we used to do Back in the day is use a mirror. You could take a mirror, put your drawing up to a mirror, and kind of see, um, kind of see where the mistakes are. Uh, my friend, well, I won't say she's my friend, but uh, I used to work with her a long time. A great artist. Her name is Joe Chen. Joe Chen. Uh, I don't know what she's doing now. She used to do a lot of Marvel 
uh, art, but uh, she was uh, with us back in Dreamwave, and we would we would be in awe with her work every time she would she would uh, bring in her work, send us her work. Her work was amazing, incredible work. Um, what she would actually do is for a comic book page, she would actually sketch out on one side, very very strong, very hard, the sketch on one side. And then what she would do is uh, take a light box and then draw it on the other side of the paper. So she would flip the page over and then actually draw it. So she would actually draw in reverse. I think that's probably her manga background because, you know, in manga, they, uh, you know, they, they draw from uh, right to left, right? Or you read it from right to left instead of left to right. So if you uh, read manga, you know, you have to buy the book backward. You know, you have to read the book backwards sometimes, right? So she's probably used to drawing that stuff. That's what I'm assuming, okay? Or she could just be doing this for, um, you know, just, just to get the mistakes. But maybe that was her way of uh, doing the sequential art, but doing it in, a, in American style. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. I could be 100% wrong. I could be 100% wrong. But uh, definitely, uh, definitely that's, uh, I thought that was an amazing trick. I really did. I, and I just realized he doesn't have a mustache. He doesn't have a mustache. I'm looking at my reference here. doesn't have a mustache. This blue, you know what this guy kind of reminds me of? Right now, the way I drew him, kind of reminds me of Panthro <laughs> from uh, Thundercats, right? Kind of, kind of reminds me a little bit, just a little bit, Panthro. <laughs> I'm gonna make him smile. I wasn't gonna make him smile, and then they look mean. Man, I'm gonna make him smile. I'm gonna make him smile, just a little bit, like that. There you go. Uh, see, Kieran puts it up to a mirror. There you, there you go. So that's uh, that's what I would do. That would that would help you find mistakes, proportion. Like there, there are like little, um, there are little uh, proportion things you could do. But again, YouTube's your best source for that. There's people who could show you like eight heads, the eight head method, or nine heads if it's a comic book character. I believe it's nine heads tall if it's a comic book character. So uh, eleven one has their techniques. That's probably the best. Just, just I'll say, good, just Google it. Google it, my friend. You'll figure that out. Okay, so I'm just gonna do one more refresh here before we get uh, to the inking of the character. Okay. Uh, okay, so that I think. Let's see here. Uh, a few more questions popped up. So thank you guys for. Um... Oh, uh, a few more questions popped up here. So thank you guys for that. Uh, Kieran asks, is there anything you don't like drawing? Like hands, for example. Um, not really. I, I don't mind. I do avoid drawing feet. <laughs> You'll see a lot of my new drawing lately. I don't know. I just get lazy. I just get lazy to draw the feet. Not that it's hard. I can draw feet. I've done it many times. But, you know, I just, I guess I'm just lazy. So you'll see. I, I have a few drawings coming up where I drew some toys, uh, in the next couple weeks. And they're the same types of drawings, but you'll you will see you'll see I I don't draw the feet. <laughs> oh boy, Grace Kenny, Kenny says uh, Genie looks like Thanos here. There, there you go. Um, I think that's what makes it a Marvel style too. <laughs> so don't draw the feet. I, th I think that's what's going on here. Right? I think that's what's going on here. I'm not drawing the feet. Uh, so. Uh, I forgot what the question was. There, there you go. <laughs> so anything I don't like drawing. Um, anything I'm forced to draw. Like, can, we, can we say that? Okay. Anything I'm, I'm forced. Like I must draw. Not I want to draw. Like I, I can be excited to draw anything. I can draw cars. I can draw buildings and stuff. I can be, but I got to be in the mood. So anything I'm not really in the mood to draw, that's where it gets difficult. It's just like one thing, like I gotta get it done. Like I, like for example, I love coloring, but I have to actually color this. Um, uh, what's it called? This uh, Black Panther mech, and I'm I'm kind of I won't say I'm dreading it, but let's just say I'm not super duper excited about it. Let's just let's just say that. Uh, but you know, I'm trying to save a little money here, so I you know I I'd, I'd love to hire my friend Thomas for that for that uh, job, but 
uh, trying to save a little bit of money, trying to do it myself these days. Uh, so, so it depends. Depends. Uh, let's see here. Is micron pads waterproof? What size do I prefer? So right now, you know what I'm noticing recently. Before I would use all sorts of sizes for microns, but recently I'm just using the the zero ones. I just use zero ones and then the permal peg marker, and that's it. That's all I've been using these days. Um, if there's something extra fine detail, then I will use the zero zero fives. But for the most part, it's just the zero zero ones. So. There you go. Okay, the thinker asks again, another question in here. Uh, imagine having Mr. Feast played by Giancarlo Esposito. That, that could happen for sure. Giancarlo is one of those versatile actors that no matter what they want to put him in, I want to watch, right? Like there's rumors of him playing Professor X, okay? Where, you know, that could be interesting. If anyone could pull it off, uh, you know, be him for sure. But, uh, you know, I'm down. I'm down. Uh, let's see here. Mr. Broken, would you like to draw a creeper from DC as yokai? I, I don't even know who that is, Mr. Broken. I apologize. Sorry to break your heart, my friend. <laughs> Sorry to break your heart. Sorry to break your heart there. So, uh, while we're doing this, uh, by the way, if, again, if you guys want to ask any other questions, go to the community tab. Ask your questions in that uh, thing there. But I'm going to go squick, uh, quickly to Instagram here. Uh, and I'm just going to answer the question, some of the questions on Instagram now. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ricky Diaz, 564, said, Did you ever make a sculpture once in your life? Like doing Marvel characters. Um, the answer is yes. Um, now, again, a big shout out to guys like uh, Dr. Garuda. I think that's his name. And there's so many of these great sculpture artists these days. They, they do phenomenal. The work that they do these days it's, it's really really incredible uh so kudos to them um i haven't done sculpture in a long 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 time i think the last time i did sculpture art oh i wouldn't even say college i think it was a high school high school was the last time i did some sculpt. no no maybe art fundamentals i had a course called the art fundamentals before i went into um before i went into uh illustration uh, we did a little bit of sculpture there, but uh, not so much. Definitely not so much sculpture. Okay, I'm not into experimenting these days. <laughs> I'm getting older, guys. You know what they say? You can't teach uh, old uh, old dogs new tricks. Uh, I can see why, because you know sometimes you're just stuck in your ways. Sometimes, and you know you should learn these things, and you know I'll be interested if you learn these things. But I'm just not very. Uh, what's it called? Not in the mood. <laughs> you know what scares me about learning new drawing techniques and stuff? You know what really scares me? And this is me being real with you guys. 100% real with you guys. Um, and uh, Amos is here. How you doing, buddy? See, good to see you again, Amos. I can be real with you guys. Uh, the hardest part is the time commitment. It's really the time. And that's what it is. Uh, it's not that I'm impatient. It's just because I don't have a lot of time. Again, uh, especially now, being a single dad, you know, it's... I don't have a, as much time as I would love to work on new things, to to do that kind of thing, right? So um, it's a time commitment. At the end of the day, it's a time commitment. Uh, so that's why it's not that I don't want to learn new styles. I don't want to new, learn new drawing techniques. It's more the time. And especially the, these days, I don't have as much time uh, as I would love to. Okay, Let me just give me one second, guys. I'm going to... Change the batteries here. So that's me being real. I'm gonna tell you the the honest truth, the honest truth here, on on the live streams. This is where you get to know the inner me, inner me as they say. So, all right. So uh, Galactic Dragons, his favorite cartoon show. Um, you know what? It was my favorite when I was a kid. Nobody, not a lot of people know this show. It's called Centurions. Centurions. I loved, loved Centurions when I was a kid. Of course, everyone loves Transformers, the, the common ones. Everyone loves Thundercats, He-Man, uh, Masters of the Universe. Like, people know those, of course. Uh, and I love those, too. But if there's one show I absolutely loved, didn't last that long, was Centurions. I would love to do a Centurions piece. Love to do Centurions. So what, for those of you who don't know, Centurions was uh, three guys, 
and they uh, they were in the army, and they represented uh, land, sea, and air, and they would have this mech that would turn them into uh, be able to navigate those spaces. So you had the one guy, uh, the land guy. He would he would have this mech that would attach to his body, and he would be able to turn himself into like a a, a motorcycle, a tank, whatever, right? And then you got the air guy. He would get these wings. And you get the ocean, the sea guy. He would get uh, the stuff in the sea, right? And there was these. Uh, the bad guys were cool too. They had the cyborg thing. Uh, that that was really really cool back in the day. So uh, centurions. That, that'd be a drawing I'd love to do. But again, it'd be one of those things. Won't get any views, but it would introduce this generation to to that kind of thing, right? So uh, that's what I would love to do. Okay. So I, again, let's see here. Another question. Let's see here. Uh, here's here's a nice question from uh, Planet Travelers ninety seven. He goes, "How do you start as an artist? I mean, from the very beginning of your journey as an artist, uh, I would say, in order to be successful at the craft of being an artist, you have to start by loving what you do. It really is. It's got to start there. It can't start because you want to make money. Okay. Same with being a YouTuber." Guys, so I will turn this into being a YouTuber because um, uh, I will turn this into being a YouTuber because a lot of you guys want to be YouTubers above being an artist. And you feel some of you feel uh, being an artist will help you jumpstart your YouTube career. That's fantastic. You got to love both. OK, if you want to be a YouTuber, you got to love making YouTube videos. You just do. You got to love the craft. And when it comes to your YouTube videos, you got to love making those kind of YouTube videos, okay? So, for me personally, okay, I do love drawing, like, those pieces with a lot of characters because at the end of the day, or those characters, where, or those pieces where I draw, like, a, a lot of stuff, I, I do like doing those things. They're fun, but I can't do them every time. Because number one, I get burned out. Number two, if they don't go the way I like to, and then I realize there's a lot of work ahead of me, uh, then it gets really frustrating after a while. Okay, So it's more like in spurts. I could take it in spurts. And right now I'm kind of out of that phase. I'd, I'd rather not do those things, even though I know that would get me more views than doing something like this would do. And now that I'm not, you know, I don't really have anyone on my payroll right now, uh, now I don't have to. I, I don't care because I, I don't have to meet that quota anymore every month. I don't have to meet uh, the financial obligations of having a team would require because those guys work so hard for me. Like uh, all of them, Mark and Mark and uh, Dr. Misaki and Joe, they work so hard for me. Uh, they believed in what I was doing and the cause and, the, and they gave it their all. They gave everything. And if they deserve to be compensated for that. You know? And I wanted to make sure not only I could compensate them, but I could, uh, you know, they would be okay afterwards. So I made sure that they were, they would be all right afterwards before I let them go. So that's all you can do, really. You know, at the end of the day, that's all you can really do. So I forgot what the question was, but <laughs> there you go. Was that all from me? Well, but, but uh, yes, love the craft first. Okay. If you're in love with getting a lot of fans first, bad way to do it, man. Absolute bad, bad, bad way to do it. Everyone here, if you're if you're into this just to gain fans, bad idea. You won't last because it takes a long, long, long time to get fans, guys. It really does. It takes a long time. You guys know, even before I got my first million, five years. It took me five years to get a million. I had no hope of getting. I never thought I'd get a million uh, subscribers. I never thought that. When I first started this channel, I, I, even 100,000 was like, oh, wow, that's a lot. You know, I never thought that was even possible to get that many uh, subs. But even, even today, though, guys, now, nowadays, and I mentioned this before, it's not about the subs anymore. To be honest, a lot of people, uh, a poll was done, four out of five people don't even look at their subscription feed anymore. They don't. When they watch a video... They go to their homepage. They let the algorithm decide what they will watch. So these days, if you want a video with lots of views, you got to please the algorithm. 
That's that's what it's about now. It's not uh, who subscribes to you because that's not a guarantee they'll they'll watch your video. Because I I wouldn't be surprised, guys. I wouldn't be surprised if in the next year or so they get rid of the play button for uh, subscribers. I would not be surprised at all, in the least, if they get rid of the play button. Right? Because even even my channel, you see how many views I get compared to how many subscribers I get. It's all like it's nothing, right? It's next to nothing. So subscribers definitely do not mean what they used to. They definitely don't. So it, it all depends on what you're into, guys. So do it for the love of the craft. So if you want to be an artist, do it because you love creating art, okay? Now, if you want to earn a living doing art, you will have to make some sacrifices at first. Before you could just draw whatever you want, you have to learn how to draw for others first, okay? So whether you want to be, and you got to find out what that is because every industry is different. Every industry is different. Concept art, what they look for in concept art is way different than what they look for in comic book art. Okay, which is way different than what they look for in poster art. All of those are very, very, very different crafts. So you got to decide what craft you want to do. And then you got to research and study what those companies are looking for, how to please them. Because you, you won't be able to do art on your own terms. Right. Until you build that audience yourself. You, you just can't. Okay. That's the only way you have the freedom. Then now the best part about me doing YouTube, I don't have. An editor I don't have someone to tell me to change things it's just me and that's the best part now someone who starts off this way and if YouTube doesn't work for them down the line they're in trouble because it's hard to switch you go from this to uh, going even if they are talented enough to go work for someone else you know that switch of going from everything you do is fine to an art director telling you to change something 50 times which is what they do in concept art like how many iterations of a character do they go through? Sometimes hundreds of iterations. Hundreds. The patience you need to be a, a concept artist. The amount of patience you need. That's a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot of patience. So it takes a very special person to be a concept artist because you've got to be able to get through all, all those changes, right? So a real, real, lot of things to think about. A lot, a lot, a lot of things about. There you go. Uh, next question here, my friends. Uh, let me refresh YouTube. And thank you guys for sticking with me today. This is a lot of fun. This is a lot of fun. Uh, let's see here. Next question. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's about the same. Mr. Broken asked, would I draw Darksiders? Uh, maybe, maybe. Isn't Darksiders, isn't that uh, Joe Matarera's, uh Project. I was a huge fan of Joe Mad's, like just the energy Joe Mad had in his uh, has has in his artwork, like that. He has this energy, like whether you like his style or not, but the energy his characters have, it's just unmatched. It's just unmatched. Like it, there's so much action, in everything he draws, it's, it's just incredible. So I believe that's uh, Dark Stars, right? That that is the Joe Mad project, right? Just looking at. Uh, just looking at uh, the, the live chat here, see if there's anyone who could confirm that for me. <laughs> confirm that for me. But yeah, Joe, Joe Mad's the man. Joe Mad. Joe Mad Herrera. Uh, he started a company with uh, J. Scott Campbell and Humberto Ramos back in the day. It was called Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. And they started with their three titles. It was uh, Battle Chasers. Uh, I believe uh, Crimson, I think it was just called Crimson, right? That was Humberto Ramos's. Crimson and J. Scott Cam Campbell had uh, Danger Girl. So they started, so it was like a, if there was anything close to Image Comics back then, back then, if there was anything close to Image Comics back then, it was that one. It was called um, Cliffhanger Comics, right? If anyone remembers Cliffhanger. Can anyone remember, let me ask you this. For anyone who remembers Cliffhanger Comics, Joe Mad, uh, uh, J. Scott Campbell, Humberto Ramos. Can anyone remember the title, the fourth title to ever come out of Cliffhanger Comics? Can anyone remember that? I'd like to ask the chat. I'd like to ask the chat. Can anyone remember the fourth title to come out of Cliffhanger Comics? 
Anyway, that's a hard question to answer. That's a hard question. A lot of you guys are young. You won't be able to get this. You won't be able to get this. I'll be able to get this. Well, let's see if someone gets it. I'll just tell you guys the answer. You won't be able to get, get it. Um, it was a little title called Tokyo Stormwind, which I drew. I was the fourth member of <laughs> Cliffhanger Comics of, Click of Cliffhanger. I was the fourth member, guys. It was me. It was me. Well, really, it was Warren Ellis. Warren Ellis uh, wrote, wrote that book. But, uh, yeah, I was the fourth guy. The fourth member. I was, uh, I was the big show uh, to the NWO. That was me. That was me, guys. That was me. I could have been bigger if I was if I was just more professional back in the day, right? So I was a fourth member, guys. So look that up. Look that up if you have some time. So uh, let's take a look at this drawing here. Well, I kind of drew his body small. I told his friend, uh, well, our buddy here, to look in the mirror. I should have looked in the mirror. But I'm at the point where I'm like, well, whatever. I'll fix it. I'm a professional. I'm a professional. Yeah, his body's very small. Very, very small. Usually, I mean, I'm kind of surprised myself. Usually I draw the body way too big. This is one of the instances I feel I drew too small. That's okay. Way, way, way too small. Yeah, bro. Thank you very much. L like my draw. There you go. There you go. So, well, Uriel says, when did you meet the rocket person? Uh, just a few days ago. Um, I met him at uh, th this very special event. Again, thank you to uh, Warner Brothers for uh, bringing me there uh, to the very, very special uh, uh, event in special event in, uh, in downtown Toronto. It was called uh, Black Adam Rocks Toronto, if I'm not mistaken. That's what it was called. It was a great time. Got to see. I was very close to. I was very very close to him. Very very close. Though he didn't see my drawing, supposedly. <laughs> Though I think if I was in the front, here's the thing, right? You know how they always say like the loudest person gets heard, right? Of course they're the loudest. Like I'm sure if he was talking, I just shouted out, "Hey, Rock, look at this! Look at this!" He would have saw it, right? Because there were some guys who were shouting while he was talking. Like, Canadians are very respectful, guys. Canadians are extremely, extremely respectful. So, you know, if The Rock's talking, you're not going to talk, right? But there was this one or two guys who would just go, hey, I love you, Rock, and he'd be like, I love you too, you know, you know stuff like that. But I'm too shy. I'm a shy guy. I, I could have done that. I could have, Rock, I love you, look at this. This is for you. I, I should have done that while he was talking, you know? I should have done that while he was talking. And then he would have saw the drawing and, and took it. Though, part of me... He's seen it already. I, I know he's seen it already. Because I know it was sent to his management team. So I have a feeling he saw it. I had that, whatever. You know, at this point, I don't, I don't really care. At this point. It was just great to see him uh, in person, you know? His body's too small. His body's too small. I, I drew this way too small, guys. But whatever. Whatever. It's fun drawing, though. Should I give him like a hairy chest? <laughs> Maybe I'll give him a hairy chest. Okay, another question, guys. Another question. Uh, let's see here. Mm. Next question here. Uh, here. Here's a good one. Here's a good question. And it's for a lot of you. From uh, Dizabalero. Dizabalero. How you doing, my friend? Dizabalero? Uh, any tips for getting started in selling artwork as a side gig? Is it okay to sell fan art? Okay, I will say, okay, so uh, this is common questions I, I get a lot. Those people who work for Marvel in DC, they are able to get away with it a little bit more, okay, without having to get a license for their drawings. Like original art, for sure, you could sell no problem. No problem, okay? Um, here's the deal. If, if I'm going to be hundred percent real with you guys, here's the deal. Uh, you might face more issues online. Okay. You might face more issues online. Uh, when it comes to comic cons, 
it's it's just so widely done now where artists would come whether they're professional or not and just start selling fan art it's so widely done now that i think they don't really care if you sell it at conventions okay now if you can sell at conventions uh if you are not a um if you are not uh a guest artist you do have to pay so that's the investment on your part so the investment is not just uh drawing your time the investment is you have to buy a table the investment is you have to um uh print all, all uh, the prints and stuff right that's your investment but you know if you're good you'll you'll make that money back pretty easily for sure uh but fan art's kind of interesting i've i've seen disney crack down on websites uh people try to sell their prints online i've seen disney do that so if you actually do not have a license okay or are not working uh for uh disney in that sense or or for those companies in that sense they have every right to shut you down but to be honest they'll only shut you down if you're doing well if you're making a lot of money <laughs> so again do everything legally guys as much as possible and much as possible always do everything legally but uh, just from my experience watching people trying to try to do this stuff for the most part i don't you know you go to a con you don't really see these, these guys don't have it guaranteed a lot of these guys they don't have the license to sell uh that artwork okay so it's very hard okay but uh for this person here uh selling artwork as a side gig there's really two parts of that number one do you have an audience who will buy it okay because again i mentioned in a previous video your artwork's only worth what someone's willing to pay for right i uh, you know this piece here somebody could if only someone's only going to buy this for five dollars that's all I'm going to get offered. It's only worth $5, right? It's only worth $5 because that's all anyone's going to offer. If only, if only people offer $5 for this art, that's how much it's worth. It doesn't matter how much time I put into it, right? So number one, number one, you have the audience who likes your art. If not, if you go to a con, your art has to be good enough to stop people from walking by. You have to stop people from walking by and uh, and have them like your art so much, they go, whoa, this piece is great, and then they'll buy it then, right? So really, that's, that's what you gotta do. Now, if you want it as a side hustle, I assume you mean online, there could be some issues online, okay? So I'm not a lawyer, I don't know, okay? I just know what I seen. Okay, so don't take uh, anything I say here as fact. So that's my disclaimer right now. Okay, and also disclaimer: anyone who watches this video, you're giving them um, permission. Uh, you are not allowed to sue me for it at all. <laughs> there you go. That's my permission right there. There you go. <laughs> Covering my eyes, jotting my T's. There you go. Okay. So just, just trying to finish up like these little details here. This one didn't take that long. Again, part of doing a group shot is that a lot of it's covered. So a lot of this stuff goes a lot faster, okay? So uh, Comic Fanboy says, call Saul Goodman. There you go. Why not? There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Next. Uh, Here's a good question. Uh, art Roses asks, any suggestion on how you can make, how I can make my own art style, okay? And that's a wonderful question to ask in the first place because sometimes people are just content um, just uh, copying somebody else's artwork. And, and to be honest, guys, like things have changed so much. And uh, let, me, let me go on this rant. This is gonna let me go on a little bit of a rant. You guys ready for the ranting? Talk about a rant. Uh, if you guys are ready for a rant, it's rant time. It's the raise rant. Are you guys ready for the raise rant? Here's the raise rant, okay? This is the one thing I really, really hate about uh, uh, TikTok in that sense, okay? I will say TikTok, all right? It is extremely, extremely hard 
to be original on TikTok. It is so hard. Okay. I, I can only imagine for comedians. Comedians, uh, they, they know they got to do TikTok, but it must be the worst for them. Okay. Because just say, for example, a comedian would do like a skit, right? A skit where they say, like, do this funny skit, right? Or they have like a funny bit they do in their stand up that they actually put up on TikTok. And it's really funny, really entertaining. They deserve all the views. They deserve it because they created it, right? They created it. They made it. But then you know what people do, right? You know what people do, right? This is what they do. First of all, you have the reactors, right? The reactors who are there, they're there, they're playing the video, and all they do is this. All they do is this, and they get millions of views, okay? Which counts towards them, not the original creator. Not the original creator. And I think there's a little delusion with some of those uh, reactors. Now, okay, again, I'm not saying reacting is bad, like it's been in YouTube forever, okay? But you gotta add your own spice to it, at least, at least commentary, at least something. But then you got the people just going like this, right? They have millions of views. And those, those people are deluding themselves if they think that they're, people are watching because of them, not because of the artwork itself. At least give some commentary or something, right? But you got those guys. Then, you know, and this is a feature. This is what I'm worried about in, uh, in YouTube now, too. There's a feature where you could actually choose their sound, okay? So they could steal the sound. So it's still that comedian talking, right? Still that comedian talking. They steal the sound, and then they just recreate exactly what they did in that original video, right? Or they play it for their, their husband or wife and just see them laughing, right? But what hurts me more is when they, uh, when they just recreate the scene, recreate exactly what that person did, right? And then they just tag that person because they, if they don't tag them, they're in trouble. But... They get all the views for it, but it was that original comedian who came up with that idea and nobody cares. Nobody cares. Because that, and sometimes it's the bigger YouTube, uh, bigger TikToker that will just steal that, steal that audio. And it's not stealing because, it, you know, they allow that, right? And they get way more views than the original video. And worse, they go to, people go to the original video and say, hey, you stole that from that guy. They stole that from that guy, right? Like guys, I grew up in a day where, where we had something called swipe of the week, in artwork, right? It's something called swipe of the week, and you did not want to be on this website. You did not want to be on the website because what they did was they would take somebody's art, just say this, they would take my art, and put it side by side with artwork that looks similar, and then they would ask the audience, "Is this a swipe? Did this artist swipe this artwork? Did they pay homage?" Homage means like uh, they, they tribute to the original artwork? Or is it just a coincidence? They would ask that. And if your art was on the site, right, you would get lambasted, you would be made fun of, all of that. Where these days, it's like, it's applauded. You get rewarded for it these days. Right? Now, I think uh, ideas, if you switch it around, like we call this creatively stealing, right? If you switch around the ideas, if you turn it, make it your own, put your own spin on the idea. Like, for example, I'll give you an example. There's a difference between, uh, you know, taking someone's audio and doing, and doing the exact same thing to us doing the same challenge, right? How many of us have done coloring book challenges? A lot of us. All of us do it. Sarah, ADC, uh, Ray, uh, Jazz. Like, we all did coloring book challenges. We all did it. And that's fine. But we all did our own spin on it. We did something different. All of us did something different. Put our unique spin on it. Okay, that's a, that's different. That's an actual challenge. Not taking someone's work and completely changing it, right? So that's that's my uh, my biggest gripe, you know. Yeah, like uh, AJ saying, uh, art originality is dying. Right? I I agree. I agree. So what I don't want for you, like you you up and coming artists, okay? For you up and coming artists, I will say this, okay? It, it's great. It's great that you look at somebody's art and try to copy it one for one, okay? It's great, you know, to learn. It's a great learning tool. That's how I learned. I used to copy Jim Lee's covers all the time. Uh, Rob Liefeld's covers all the time, all the time. 
I would do that. Okay. But there needs to be a come a time where you don't need to do that anymore, where you just need to go and do things uh, yourself, do things on your own terms. Okay. Cause you could, and, and what irks me even more. Okay. You know what grinds my gears is when people copy another artist they put it on YouTube or they put it on TikTok and they don't credit the original artist. You see that happening all the time today. All the time. At, at least copy or uh, copy, at least credit the original artist. Uh, you know, now again, if, if you're doing it to learn, that, that's fine. I encourage that actually. I encourage you to take your favorite artist, you know, try to draw and really understand why they make choices. Like for me here, why am I adding these lines here at the bottom? Why am I adding all these dark spots here? There's a reason for that. And that's because of the lighting, okay? There's a reason I'm adding all this stuff, okay? So learn that way. And, uh, you know, but people don't do it now, and, and it is what it is, you know? It is what it is. Uh, at the end of the day, that's all I could say. It is what it is. It's what's accepted today. But I will, I will also say a little, little bit of a warning for you guys. If it doesn't work out, if TikTok fades out and you're trying to get a real, I won't say even a real job because TikTok, YouTube, it's a real job, okay? But if you ever wanted to start drawing professionally, doing what my friends like uh, Andy Park, Anthony Francisco do, if you want to work in comic books, you cannot take your TikTok art, your YouTube art, and use that as your portfolio. It's not going to work. It's not going to work, okay? So you got to really understand what they are looking for in those genres. Now, back to the original question. How do I develop my style? You can start by taking a look at your favorite artists and see what you like from their art. What do you like from their art? I'll find a lot of the artists that you like, a lot of them started, started off as quote unquote clones of some of their favorite artists, of their favorite artists. Like I would say like uh, guys like J. Scott Campbell, um, uh, uh, the late great Michael Turner, like all of them, like um, Brett Booth. Brett Booth's doing some awesome things on Twitter, by the way. I love Brett Booth. He's fantastic. Um, Brett Booth started off as a big Jim Lee clone, and then he evolved his style to what it is today. He started adding his own flavor. Uh, so you could that's a good starting place, looking at other artists. And then if you start combining what other artists do, you start looking at different styles of art and then experiment. Experiment with your style, and eventually, eventually you'll find it. Okay, so we're almost coming to the end here, guys, and uh, the end for today, because I do have a hard out. Uh, I, you know, I have a bit more time, but I do have a bit, tiny bit more time here, and we will do a rapid fire with the live chat. Okay, so yeah, when I say shoot in your questions in the live chat, and I will answer them in rapid fire form. Okay, as I finish off this, but. That is my rant for today. <laughs> That's the Ray's rant. Someone, someone do a, uh, someone do um, a jingle for that. The Ray's rant. Okay, there you go. Someone do the Ray's rant. All right. Uh, let me do even three hours on the podcast itself. Long podcast, guys. Long, 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 long podcast. Let me just do one thing here. Oh, uh, hey, KJK put in a gigantic super chat. Now, thank you so much, KJK. Yeah, fifty dollars super chat. Thank you so much. A great fan of your work. Keep it up. Thank you so much, KJ. I really, really appreciate that. It means a lot to me that uh, you're willing to support me on that that manner. Thank you so much, my friend, KJ. If you have a question, KJK, you you get it. Okay, so make sure you you ask a question. All right, my friend. Uh, while I just do one thing here, make sure do one thing here. I just wanted to open up my messages here before we finish off. Just wanted to see if anyone uh, have any interest. Nope. Good stuff. So let's, uh, we're going to finish this off here. I'm just going to add a couple more little lines here. Because at this point, guys, there's so much going on in this drawing right now that I don't need to add too, too much. You know what I mean? Too, too much. Uh, you know, I could add every nook and cranny, which I could. But there's so much going on, so much to look at, that if I don't complete everything 100%, it's not that big of a deal. It really isn't. So... Ooh, artist, this this marker has had it. This marker's had it. Guys, this marker's dead. 
That's okay. I got tons more. So thank you to my friends at Micron again. So uh, we will be continuing this piece tomorrow, guys. We will be continuing this piece tomorrow. So make sure you uh, keep your notifications on so you know when I'm up. We're going to add two more characters to this piece. If you could guess which two, I know which two we're going to do already, but if you could guess which two characters you think I'm going to add to this tomorrow, by all means. Now, there are tons of Mirrorverse characters. There are absolute tons. Oops, you didn't even see what I was doing. There are tons of uh, Mirrorverse characters. So. So if you want to guess which one I'm going to do next. So I plan on doing two tomorrow because they're a little bit more extensive. So that's what we plan on doing tomorrow, okay? So. I'm just uh, trying to finish this up before we go into rapid fire and then we're going to call it a day. And uh, again, guys, if you were drawing during the stream, I'd love to see it. So uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, tweet that to me at box office artist okay as i try to finish up well things i probably add a little bit more detail to it a little bit later later on oh mario threw in another super chat you don't have to do that buddy you don't have to do that um so would you consider drawing a red dead, dead, dead uh redemption 2 poster wonderful game i haven't played myself it looks fantastic though maybe i'll, I'll put that in the maybe pile it's definitely not on the immediate pile but definitely maybe uh something i would consider for the future uh, absolutely Absolutely. So we will see, my friends. We will see. I'm just going to a little bit more detail in his. Uh... See, again, I don't, I don't have to do this, but I want to. Makes me happy. Makes me happy. Okay. Just erase what's uh, his eyes here. Okay. So as we uh, settle down here. Again, thank you to everybody who uh, put in questions. So we are going to do a rapid fire right now, okay? We're going to do a rapid fire as we finish up, okay? So if you want, now's your time in the live chat right now, especially those of you who have been watching uh, all three streams. Please put in your questions right now into the live chat, and I will answer everything as fast as I can, okay? Uh, so Uriel says, please, James, one day will you start drawing all of Sylvester Stallone's movie roles? Uh, that was definitely in the plans before. We were trying, we were thinking about other uh, actors we could do. Um, it's very tricky with actors because I give you 100% honest, you never know when they're going to be canceled. <laughs> you never know when they get canceled. But that was definitely one. Arnold Schwarzenegger was definitely one, but probably won't do one for a while. Okay. Uh, Cross Comics says, have you ever thought about making your own comic books? Um, I mentioned that earlier where uh, I was actually developing uh, something with my with my kids' comics, but that has been put on the black back burner for now. Uh, you never know. Maybe one of these days. We'll, we'll see. Um, Angel Bob 1977 says, the best movie you've seen this year. Oh, uh, Everything Everywhere All Once was fantastic. I love that movie. That was a lot of fun. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, off the top of my head, I would say that. Uh, but I, I would have to think about that. If I come up with a better answer, I'll let you guys know tomorrow, okay? I'll let you guys know tomorrow. Uh, let's see here. The Murugan Samarjith, or Whistle, I can't pronounce any of that, but I apologize, my friend. So fast! <laughs> if you're talking about my drawing, yes, it's, uh, but again, uh, that's years of experience, my friend. Years of experience, so. Or if you're talking about talking, yes, I do talk so fast. Uh, Mahali Kamdar says, would you be drawing any other Disney characters? Yes, we will do a few more tomorrow, uh, at least two. Uh, I left room for two because these are a little bit more substantial characters than I could be drawing tomorrow. Okay, so that's what we will do. Uh, poopability, will you ever draw something related to James Bond? It depends. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't watched many of the, the newer ones. I haven't watched any of the Daniel Craig movies. I, I actually haven't. So maybe if I watch all the Daniel Craig movies, if I get excited, if it's something that excites me, or maybe when they announce the new James Bond, maybe, maybe. Let's see here. Um, let's see here. Uh, next, my, Michael Kelly. Will you ever come uh, to the U.S. to do a meet and greet type thing? Maybe, maybe. I was actually in the U.S. Uh, recently. I was. Uh, I went to, which you guys will see. Uh, we are going to put up vlogs, but I went to Las Vegas, uh, L.A., and uh, Hawaii and San Francisco uh, within a month. It was, it was crazy, but it was so much fun. I had a wonderful time with the family, but uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, let me know where you would like that to be, okay? 
Would you make your drawings into figurines? Maybe one day, AJ. Maybe one day, but not definitely not now. Definitely not now. Uh, let's see here. Articus84, would you do a most detailed drawing again? Yes. Yes, I have a, uh, maybe we'll do something where maybe I'll take a whole week to do a drawing. So if I do do one, it will be with you guys. You guys get to watch the whole thing, okay? Uh, Reese, my buddy Reese, how you doing? How you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> buddy Reese. Uh, let's see here. Um, MBJ says the best movie I've seen are Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and Black Adam. Both are, well, Black Adam was a great movie and, and really, really enjoyed that. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, I actually haven't seen. I, I probably will do a Sonic the Hedgehog drawing uh, sooner than later. I think I would love to do that. So uh, this week, by the way, guys, uh, we're going to be finishing this off, adding a couple more characters. Plus, I might be doing a Warhammer piece this week, plus maybe one more drawing this week, but uh, we, will, we will see. Uh, I don't know who that is, uh, VS. Um, uh, can I draw? try to draw Cobra Kai? I would if I knew the property that well. I haven't really watched an episode. Uh, let's see here. And uh, Michael said, would you ever consider doing a collab with a subscriber? <laughs> well, the closest thing to that, okay? Uh, let me ask RC, but then I'll end off with yours, Michael, okay? And then we'll, we'll call it a day. Is there any chance you'll see you drawing a League of Legends characters? Maybe. Uh, if there's one that I might do all of them, it might be League of Legends. It might be. That might be one I would consider doing, but definitely not in the immediate future. But... In terms of what Michael says, uh, would you do a collab with the subscriber? The closest thing, I would say, uh, again, another three uh, types of videos I want to do. Number one, I want to draw your OCs. I want to draw your OCs, okay? Uh, especially if you are a younger person, like a teenager. Uh, I would love to draw your OCs or maybe your, your kid children's OCs. Uh, the more, um, yeah, I, I would love to do it. If you want to share me your OCs on, you, on uh, Twitter, Please do, please do share it, and then um, and I'll message you, and maybe we can work something out. Okay. Also, uh, again, for the, if you don't have an OC, maybe if you like doing Lego, if you want to build a character in Lego, okay, share that with me on Twitter, and then I'm gonna draw it in my style. Okay, that's gonna be fun. I actually did one of those recently. Okay, I did one of those recently, and uh, that will be up very on. And then the last way is if uh, you do something in Minecraft, if you create a character. Like uh, if you create a Minecraft skin, make your own Minecraft skin, and then send that to me, and I, I think I can make something cool out of it, that's what I will do. All right? All right, guys. So let me just do a quick uh, scan here, but that is it for today. Uh, thank you who joined in for all three streams today. We did three streams because I did one per character. But this is where we're at for my uh, Disney glow up, Disney in a Marvel style, however you want to call it. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. Everyone in the chat, thank you for, for being here. Robor, good to see you again, my friend. Thank you for everyone for joining in. Uh, also, you guys don't know, I recorded this whole thing as a podcast as well, okay? Three-hour podcast. If you just want to sit down and listen to me yap, that's why I was yapping for the whole three hours straight. Uh, by all means, please do subscribe to the Box Office Artist Podcast. And thank you guys for listening to the podcast. If you're listening on the podcast, would like to see the actual drawing I did, head over to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash... Uh, oh, you know there's a handles now, right? So it's actually youtube.com slash at box office artist. So if you put at box office artist, my channel's gonna pop up now, which is fantastic, okay? So you can check out my live streams in the live tab. Go to the live tab. Thank you guys for watching. Everybody watching the live chat, give me a high five. And my name is James. I am the box office artist. I'm here to say keep drawing. I'll see you all next time. Maybe tomorrow. See you guys. Bye-bye.